It has been nearly a decade since Grand Theft Auto V was released. With the recent leaks of Grand Theft Auto VI coming out, I decided it was time to go back to the part of the game that I feel has become a little underrated these days, the story mode. Originally, I was going to play the expanded enhanced edition, but then I realized I already owned it on PC. The most important part of any story is the beginning. It's the part that will determine whether you continue to stick through until the end. Rockstar Games revolutionized the hook in stories by starting the game with a woman being assaulted and held at gunpoint. Alright, everybody pays attention, no one gets hurt! It is here that we meet M, T, and B, or as I like to call them, the Alphabet Squad. They are robbing a cash depot, not a bank, which a lot of people seem to confuse. We get a hefty sum of cash, put a man to sleep, and wind up having to face a wave of cops. If there was one thing I disliked about Breaking Bad, it was how unrealistic the shootouts were. If someone like me, who has no experience with firing a gun, aside from shooting my own hand one time, can game end 20 cops within a minute, surely Hank could have just ended the show within one second. They managed to reach their getaway vehicle, but unfortunately lose their getaway driver. I don't even know why they had a getaway driver when his death ultimately causes zero problems for them. They need to beat the train that literally doesn't exist. Okay, so let's look at this. Don't worry guys, I'm going really- f oh, okay. After that, they are left stranded searching for a mysterious helicopter. I'm disappointed that we never hear more about this character, though we do get some references to them later in the story. B gets shot and T takes cover, but M stands out in the open, so obviously waiting for something to happen, it's almost like he wanted to get shot. T is supposed to fight off the cops in the last stand, but that takes effort, so I just run away. And with that, GTA 5 truly begins. We see that M is indeed not dead and is actually named Michael DeSanta. He is living the ideal life of a middle-aged man with no one who really loves him, but everyone sticks by him because he's rich and thus he can only vent his true feelings to a therapist. The life that most strive for. He crosses paths with another one of our main characters, Franklin Clinton and his friend Lamar. They retrieve some fancy looking cars and proceed to race across the city. Honestly, it's pretty difficult to race someone when you don't know where you are going and have to follow them. Despite that, I still win and then proceed to meet the most horrifying entity in the GTA universe, the police. These supernatural forces of nature have powers beyond human comprehension, appearing wherever you are, spotting you from miles away, tracking you to the end of the earth. We evade them and return to our incredible job at a completely legitimate car dealership. Our boss, Simeon, the completely legitimate businessman, is making a deal with a customer who will later turn out to be an important character. Franklin, being the only person in this game of any sense of reason, doesn't care and returns home. He lives with his aunt, Denise, a character who exists, and that's all you need to know. Anyway, Franklin heads back to work and is made Employee of the Month. He tries to talk about how he feels he hasn't making any progress in life, but Simi ignores him and Lamar comes in to complain about not getting Employee of the Month. Truly an incredible life that Franklin currently has. Our next job is to repossess a bike from a local gang. I restarted this mission numerous times due to me trying to do something creative, but Rockstar Games doesn't allow that. I get in this Man, car. Pussy the only thing that's smooth up in this shit. Man, what exactly did I do in the past life to deserve your- Okay, never mind. You're supposed to chase down the owner of the bike, but I just shoot him in the moment I see him, no questions asked. When we meet Lamar at the car wash, Franklin complains about how you can't repossess a dead man. My boy, you were the one who shot him in cold blood. Lamar takes the bike for himself and leaves. This leads us to the next mission, in which we repossess another vehicle. Rockstar really had no inspiration for this game. It turns out we are repossessing the vehicle that the kid bought back in the first mission. We sneak into the house in order to get into the garage. It turns out that Michael was sleeping in the back of the car and orders Franklin to act naturally. Why'd you tell me to press R? Gee, guys, what are you- Michael, are you okay? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I guess I missed the, um, the prompt here. I think I did a pretty good job. What happens next can only be described as the most intense fight in gaming. Oh, you Aerial attack! What? Oh my god! With Michael having asserted his dominance over Simeon, we unlock the ability to play as him. Where Franklin's missions have all been about repossessing vehicles, Michael's are about failing to connect with his family. Before we get to that, however, we must first complete the most important mission in the game. Hey, Tanya. The tow a car for seven minutes mission. Fun fact, 
This mission is the only side mission that is required. This is the mission they chose to introduce you to side missions. But I guess honest work does pay off, as we end up encountering a random event that unlocks Patrick McCreary for heists. Franklin returns home and avoids his aunt, only for Lamar to come in with an idea for some quick cash. Chop joins them for this mission and helps us chase down a man that we are trying to kidnap. Don't hump him, bite his ass, Chop! Hey, yeah. What? Yeah, we definitely need a chop for this one. Anyway, the mission winds up being pointless as Lamar calls his people he is trying to blackmail for money with his cell phone. Franklin lets the man go and heads over to Michael's house for the next mission. What do you want? Their plan is to go to a bar, get interrupted when Michael's son, Jimmy, that kid from the dealership, tells him that he is on a boat soaring down the highway. Franklin tags along on a quest to save him and winds up being the MVP of the game. We manage to secure Jimmy and drive to Los Santos Customs after the car begins to break down and it's here where I get an opportunity to brand my vehicle. They don't have the exact colors I need, and there isn't really a way where you can get custom colors in the game, so I just do the best with what I have. I don't think you ever actually have to drive this car in the game, so I think that I invested my money well. The next mission I do is completely optional at this point in the story. You don't have to do it until way later, and since it's technically optional at this point in the game, it's also optional to include in this video. So I won't, just kidding, Lamar has another deal with the guy that gets kidnapped, it goes wrong, and we are forced to shoot our way out of a recycling plant. After that, Michael goes home to find that his wife is having an affair with the tennis coach. Franklin returns to Michael's house at the exact same time because he has nothing better to do with his life. Once again, they team up to get the job done. We trail the tennis coach to a house that he certainly can't afford and pull down the deck. Oh. This is the moment that I would consider to be the true start of the game, as it starts a domino effect that leads to the very end. It turns out that the house was not owned by the tennis coach, but someone else, and Martin Madrazo visits Michael to teach him not to mess with other people's property. He needs to accumulate over $2 million to pay for the damages, and contacts Lester Crest, probably the best character in gaming. We meet him at his incredible house, and he agrees to help if we help him. He wants us to install an upgrade for the new phone being released by Mark Zuckerberg. Buying some fashionable clothes, we are able to get into the Life Invader building without any issue. Apparently the phone is left out in the open and there are no other security devices in place. We rig the phone with the mysterious device and leave. Michael, being as brain dead as he is, leaves the bag he was carrying the device in, certainly incriminating himself. Anyways, we kill Mark Zuckerberg. Before I can start the next mission, Michael's wife and man Nick calls him and asks for help. I was gonna say no, but still having some humanity left in me, couldn't bring myself to. I deal with that situation, and then proceed to move on to the real story. Michael's precious son Jimmy is acting a little bit rude to his peers online, and as a reasonable response, Michael smashes his TV. Jimmy gets upset and they both decide to head down to the beach for a nice bike ride. Nah, we're driving just like fine, what do you mean? Bike rental guy out of like four There you go. I take a shortcut at the start, and that makes it so for the entire race I am cycling alone without any dialogue. Why is it so quiet? He's so far behind us right now. Jimmy tells us that his sister is out having fun on the yacht nearby, and since Michael doesn't want his children to be happy, he goes out and throws her friends off the boat. They understandably are a little bit upset, but we just kill them and move on. You are meant to escape them by going through this tunnel, but sometimes violence is a quicker solution. We end up disappointing both of our children, but who cares, we are about to take the biggest take in our life. I spend an unreasonably long time to actually get to the mission, and when I do, I remember I was supposed to buy a fancy suit. Alright, $3,900 spent on a suit. I really love how money works, and how prices Bye. of life work. With that out of the way, Lester and Michael case a jewel store in order to figure out their approach. You get a choice between being loud or subtle when it comes to the heist, and I choose subtle. I once again take the time to brand Michael's car before borrowing a pest control van for the heist. After I borrow a top scientific institution's van for- I wasn't actually paying attention to what Lester was saying, so I don't know why I am stealing this, probably for some knockout gas. With that, it's time to begin the heist. Franklin knocks out everyone in the jewel store by throwing a canister into the ventilation. I chose the worst hacker possible, so I had to be quick when breaking the cases. I almost thought I wasn't going to get them all for a second, but wind up making it just in time. Outside, Franklin is being harassed about having to move his bike, so Michael steps in. He hands over his bag and just... walks away, I guess. The crew races off into the city without any direction on where they are going. They end up in the sewers and somehow having crashed and died before making it out into a wave of cops. Oh! Michael is now driving a big truck and ramming all of the police cars. 
This is supposed to be the getaway vehicle, which means that it really shouldn't be doing anything suspicious. Fortunately, the police must have forgot to fuel their helicopters that day, because after destroying every police car, the bikes drive into the back of the truck and take off. It's like they say, there are two kind of robberies, those who get away, and those who have witnesses. Quick note here, Michael says that the pay for the heist will be awful, yet Michael gets 1.2 million and Franklin gets nearly 300,000. I guess Michael's standards are a little bit high. The two of them celebrate before being rudely interrupted by Dave Norton. By the way, does Michael actually lock his door to the house because people are just walking all the time? Anyway, anyone with a keen eye will realize that this was the guy who shot Michael in the beginning. He complains to them about the heist, but the two of them laugh it off. This leads to the best transition in gaming. I don't know anything about that. This other guy runs out of the shop. Rockstar somehow managed to introduce Trevor by having him kill a protagonist from a previous DLC, and he's still one of the most legendary characters in gaming. Anyway, trying to condense this game into one video would take several years of effort, so if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and comment down below. About 99% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so I, okay, I don't know, Dream did this and he has a few more subs than me, so maybe it works.